Hey, what is up guys? It is Harrison Barron from Growth Generators. Now in this video, I want to talk to you guys about Google Search Console, how to read it, how to understand it, Google Analytics, how to read it, how to understand it, and ultimately how to set them both up so you can make better and educated decisions about your entire website. So where people are coming in, how they're interacting with your website, and really kind of go through the nitty gritty. Now this is going to be a deep dive. This is not going to be the most deep dive because I could spend hours and hours and hours on these, but I do encourage you after this video, after you set these up, give it anywhere between 48 hours to 72 hours, they should finally be set up. And then go in every week or two and start to drill down and test and figure out and see what's working for you and what's working, you know, on your website versus, you know, maybe A-B testing, things like that. Before we get into it, at any point, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. We love making content for this kind of stuff. Honestly, it's what gives us uh, content to make and ultimately we love helping people. This is something we really, really enjoy doing. and. More often than not, we have a pretty in-depth knowledge of this kind of stuff. Also, if you find value in this, please hit that like button. It absolutely helps the, the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button so you never miss another video and that little notification bell there. And let's get into it. We're gonna jump into my computer. I'm gonna go step by step on everything that you're gonna need to know for your website. So in this case, I'm gonna be using a software called Kajabi, but no matter what platform you use, this is the exact same process you're gonna use every single time. Now we're gonna start with Google Search Console. The reason why you're gonna to wanna to start with Google Search Console is one, on your new website, you want, you, you want Google to index it. So what does that mean? You want Google to go through, crawl your entire website, see what they like about it and what they're gonna start showing people. Also, in the beginning of that, you go through the Google Sandbox. It's this period of time where Google makes sure that you're legit and you say you, you are who you say you are. And two, they're trying to figure out what you should actually be shown for online. The sooner you can get in there, the sooner you can get out of that, and the sooner you can start building some traffic to your website. Google Analytics usually takes about 24 hours to sync up, and after that, you're good to go, and we're gonna dive into all of these kinds of things, how to make better decisions. Figure this is probably gonna be about a half hour long, so I hope you guys are ready. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. We're gonna dive right into this. So without any further ado, let's jump into my computer here. So this is Google Search Console. Now, in this case, I happen to already have Google Search Console set up for my personal website, which is harrisonbarron.com. But if you don't have it set up for your website, this is the exact process you're gonna to wanna to do. You're gonna go in here, you're gonna click Add Property, and from there, you're gonna type in your domain. So that is whatever it is. In this case, it's my name, right? So it's gonna be harrisonbarron.com, and then you're gonna be able to hit Continue. Now, this is gonna say you already own this property, but if you don't own this property, I'm gonna use a, um, I'm gonna use a website like Etsy, right? And obviously I don't have access to Etsy, but it's gonna say, hey, verify Etsy. You're gonna take this bit of code right here with this line, and you're gonna copy it into the TXT records. Now, I happen to have my domain on uh, GoDaddy, but for you, you may have it somewhere else. Every domain provider has the ability to go in here and set it up. Depending on where you are, depending on where, you know, what platform it is, it may be a little more difficult to find. If you buy it on one of the, I call them no name domain people, so like constant contact, they should never have your domain. So if you buy it, please try to get it off there as soon as possible. But essentially you wanna be able to go in here, copy this, you're gonna click it, it'll say copy to keyboard, or clipboard I should say. And then you're gonna go down and you're gonna be able to go into your domain, right? I already have my personal domain here. And you're gonna be able to hit manage DNS. And from there, and the reason why I'm using this is because it is a Kajabi website and this is where the question originally came from. In here, you're gonna be able to go in and modify your name servers. Now in this particular case, I have it on Cloudflare. So I would then need to go to Cloudflare and I'm gonna fire up Cloudflare really quick so you guys can see it. And the reason why this is really important is where your, I'm gonna just pull this off screen so you guys don't see a username and password here, but the reason why it's on Cloudflare is because that's what Kajabi requires. Now in the vast majority of use cases, wherever your DNS is pointing to, so if it's on Wix, it's gonna be on Wix. If it's on Squarespace, it's gonna be on Squarespace. If it's a locally managed server, when I say that, meaning like on GoDaddy, you'll be able to do it right here and you'll be able to mess around with your, um, your settings and you don't have to go to a third party or something like that. But this is typically where it's gonna be involved. Now inside Cloudflare, you're gonna have all this kind of stuff. You're gonna ultimately look for your domain. Give me a second, because it has been a little while since I've done this. Should say my domain. That's wonderful, it doesn't say my domain. There it is, all right, cool. 
So we're gonna go in here, you'll see DNS settings, and this is essentially where you're gonna do it. You're gonna hit add text record, and there it is, right? There's my DNS settings. Now, that is literally the process. If you're on Kajabi, you will have to go through this depending on what platform it is. Is it a little bit of a pain in the butt? Yes, but it's a one-time setup. You literally never have to do this again, which is a home run. And that's it, you're done, you're set up for your Google Search Console. Now, when you do this, it's actually gonna say, give us 24 to 48 hours, that's why I said let it sit, and really, you're not gonna have good data for about three months. And when I say three months, it, your graph may not look like this, it's probably gonna look something similar to uh, the beginning of this graph, where it's just getting figured out, right? So, you're starting out, starting out, starting out, and you're in that sandbox where Google's really not showing you out, right? And, and that's when they're trying to figure out, you know, who you are, what you do, and all that kind of stuff. After a while, and after putting out good content, you'll then progressively go through the ranks. But this is essentially the first thing that you're gonna see, you're, you, and you'll just see like little spikes. You might get, you know, a couple impressions per day, a couple impressions per day, but the longer you do this, the better and better it's gonna get. Now, we happen to have a lot of experience in SEO, and that's why you see some aggress aggressive growth, but it doesn't matter how good you are at SEO, you're still gonna be stuck in that sandbox for a little while. And it varies site to site, niche to niche, all that kind of stuff. And then after that, you're essentially done with your domain provider, and in this case, Cloudflare, which is your security. But that's it, that's all you need to do for that. Now you might be thinking, well, what about Google Analytics? And I'm gonna go into and cover a more in-depth version of this later on in the video, but I just wanna get this set up for the people that are really interested in setting this up. So next is gonna be Google Analytics. Once again, very self-explanatory. Uh, if you've never done this, it can be a little confusing. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to settings, and then if you don't already have a property, this is where you would set up your properties, right? So obviously you should have an account. If you don't have an account, you're gonna wanna create this first, right? But currently I have my account here. Then I have the property. So what is that property? The property is going to be my name. If you don't have a property or you wanna add another property, you're gonna simply hit create property. You're gonna name it, so let's call it Etsy. For this case, you're gonna hit next, and then you're gonna select all this kind of stuff. Now, this is more for Google to hang on to and hold on to. Does it really matter? No, it, it really doesn't for the, for the vast majority of it. Is it gonna help you get better analytics or better statistics? It could, but I've never really seen it matter to a lot of websites. We do set this up for a lot of people. So, you have business size, you have small, medium, large. In this case, Etsy is gonna be a large, I think they're like 500 people, right? How do you intend to use Google Analytics? Optimize my advertising. Like there, there's all these different options, right? And I think is it a yeah? It's a multi checkbox. Uh, measure lead generation. Optimize my site for customer experience. Measure customer engagement, right? Create beautiful, and then it's going to give me some more information here. Now, if you're doing this, you want to choose the platform web, right? And then you're going to put your domain name in here. So this is where your domain name goes, and then your stream name is just going to be your stream name. And at the end of it, it's going to go in and it's going to spit out. A series of numbers. Now, Kajabi hasn't quite officially said whether or not they're supporting Google Analytics 4, which is the newest version. They're supporting Google Analytics 3 currently. Um, if you're watching this video in the future, chances are pretty good they're supporting Google Analytics 4. But essentially, that what you're looking for is this number right here. This is the 266 um, number, and if you go in and you're not sure where it is, you can go up to your uh, accounts right up here, all web data. You're gonna go in, this is your account, right? Then you're gonna go into the appropriate area. Now if you see UA, that's Google Analytics 3. If you don't see the UA, that's Google Analytics 4. Either way, it doesn't really matter, and this is what Google Analytics 4 will look like on your account. Let's just go home really quick. And as you'll see, there should be no, yeah, there's no information here, because it just doesn't work with it. It's For whatever reason, it just, they're not there yet. That's okay. Most other platforms will work with it. I know Wix currently, they're still working on it and stuff like that, but for other platforms, they may already be there. WordPress I know is already there and stuff like that. Now what you need to do is you need to go in and grab this number right here. So it's UA15928976-4. That is going to be your Google Analytics number. And then it'll actually spit it out once you submit your domain, it'll tell you right there. Now you wanna go into your Kajabi, and you wanna go into your settings. From there, you're gonna go into your, should be your analytics, third-party integrations. Hey, there it is. 
So Google Analytics right here, you're gonna paste that in there. Obviously, if you have a Facebook Pixel, this is the same area you'd put your Facebook Pixel. And you wanna flip it on. If you have it off, you are missing the boat. Uh, you, you definitely wanna have this on because this is where you get good information. Now in this case, obviously you'll see UA, right? Because Kajabi hasn't officially said they're gonna support uh, Google Analytics for yet. And I don't blame them, it's, it's relatively new. It came out uh, in the middle of last year and it takes a little while. They didn't really give uh, dev time or anything like that to developers. Totally fine, I get it. But you're gonna plug it right in there. And after you know a couple hours, it should start to pull in some data. And the really cool part is, you can actually see who's viewing your website throughout the day and stuff like that. So now that we've covered setting up your Google Analytics, and by the way, this area is in every single website, you just have to look for it. In Wix, it's under settings. In Squarespace, it's under settings. If you're using uh, WordPress, there's either a plugin, you can do like Yoast, or you can do Monster Insights. You could grab that and plug it right in there. Whatever it is, that's where you can do it. In Webflow, you can go into, it's also in settings under the SEO settings, and you just have to look for it. Now, all of these main providers or builders for websites, if you just Google how to submit your you know, Google Analytics uh, ID into the website, they will come right up and they will tell you, no questions asked. They all have plenty of paperwork because they understand the value of having this. But what nobody ever talks about is Google Search Console. So from here on out, I'm gonna just spend about five minutes or so in Google Search Console, what you can learn from it, how you can modify it, optimize it, and the data that you can use as a uh, admin, right, or the owner to say, hey, I'm gonna make better decisions, right? So. Let's jump into it. Now you see that I have some massive growth. Very excited about it. This has been a awesome case study that we're doing here on whether or not you can actually build traffic to your Kajabi website. And for the sake of this, I'm gonna pull out just the three months because this is the most important data. And especially, it's really important because I don't really care what my website did a year ago, especially because it was in the Google Sandbox. What I really care about is what's happening right now to my website and what can I do to make it better. So you have your total clicks, Pretty self-explanatory, how many people click on your website, total impressions, how often people are seeing it. So if I go to pros and cons of alignable, and this is what counts as an impression, if you don't know. So I'm ranking number two, right? And as I search this, uh, it says the truth uh, about alignable, IYBS, then it has my blog post, then it says how to advertise, right? What are the pros and cons for those of you who are choosing using alignable regularly? These are all things that my blog post is coming up for. And as I scroll through, once they've been on the page for anywhere between one to three seconds, it counts as an impression. Take that number, do your math, and you get your average click-through rate. So I don't particularly love the average click-through rate because it's the entirety of your website. Now there's a lot of pages on your website that may or may not be getting traffic, or they might be sales pages where you're really not driving you know, Google searches to, which can lower your click-through rate. Something I don't particularly like, but it's in there. Same thing with average position. It's really good, you know, if you're trying to rank every single page, but to be realistic, you're probably not trying to rank every single page on your website. It would just be impossible. Your homepage would have to be massive to get it to rank number one on Google, unless somebody goes and specifically looks for your domain. But the cool part is, is if you click these, more data shows up down here, and this is what I really want to get into. So you'll see, right now I have in the last three months, 911 clicks. 57,000 impressions, 1.6 click-through rate, and an average position of 40.5. But that's that's important information, but not the most important information. Now, the real meat and potatoes of this entire thing is actually going to be, and I'm just going to pull out some, some rows right here, is, is going to be in this area down here, is in the queries and pages. Countries, if you're doing around the, around the world, uh, devices, if you really care about that kind of stuff, search appearance, dates, all that kind of stuff, it, it does help, but it's honestly the queries and the pages is going to be the most important parts. So in here, you're gonna see a bunch of different stuff. You'll see impressions, you'll see um, clicks, you'll see position, you'll see click-through rate, right? So pros and cons of Alignable. My blog, or this query, when somebody searches it, gets on average a 10.6% click-through rate. Now, that happens to be pretty high, especially with the amount of uh, impressions that they're getting and, and where it's ranking on Google. So currently, this is telling me that it's ranking number 3.1, so that means it's bouncing usually between three and four on Google, and who knows, that could be higher or lower, and I'm gonna show you how to go into there, but this is what your website is currently ranking for. So you have pros and cons of Alignable, right? Is Alignable worth it? And this is my personal website, this is not Growth Generator's website. Growth, we just 
rebranded, so there's not enough data on there. That's why I'm not using that specific website. Uh, Anchor upload limit, expand.io reviews. I talk a lot about LinkedIn and podcasting. Uh, realistic website traffic growth, right? Pros and cons of, uh, of Anchor podcast, Anchor podcast upload limits, my name, right? And all of these are going to be associated with clicks that they've received over the last three months, right? You have to have that up there. You're going to have your impressions. So how many impressions it's gotten in the last three months, your average click through rate on each query. So once again, that query is that search on Google, not the page, but the search on Google and then the position that it's in currently. So pros and cons of alignable is 3.1 is, is alignable uh, worth it? 6.4, right? Posting inappropriate things on social media, 2.9. So I actually know that I've lost rankings on here because I used to be number one for a very long period of time. Anchor upload limit, 5.8. Expand.io reviews, 6.9, right? Uh, alignable versus LinkedIn, 10.8. And as time goes on, and you can go in and drill down on these, but the cool part is, is just to give you an idea, I, I've used this in the past before, but posting inappropriate things on social media. Well, I'm 2.9. I know that a couple months ago I was position one or position zero, that little snippet up top. And I just want to check before I go in here what I am currently ranking on there. And I'm back to number one, right? So great, posting inappropriate things on social media, right? What to do when your kids post inappropriate content online, all this kind of stuff, very important. Um, and now if you click it, it's actually gonna show you the query and just this query. So over time, right, It's it's if you see breaks, it's still trying to figure out exactly where you belong or there's really not that much search or that many searches going to this specific query where it doesn't know exactly who to put up top because there's not that many searches going to that query. But the cool part is, is I know over the last three months, I've gotten 13 clicks, 101 impressions. My click through rate is 12.9% and my position is 2.9. That's the overall average over the last three months. If I want to change this to the last seven days, now I get to really see what this has been doing over the last week. So I'm in position 3.2. It's gotten nine impressions, zero clicks and zero click through rate. Totally fine on this one query. I'm not even, I'm not mad about that. And that's normal. And Google's trying to provide the best results to those queries, to those questions that people are answering or asking. So you'll see in here, and now I know that, hey, posting inappropriate things on social media, right? I'm showing currently number one, so maybe it's testing it currently. But what I can do, as you know, you as the business owner can go in and say, hey, if you're ranking number five, maybe number 10, maybe number 20, right? Read the other articles in the area, right? That are ranking ahead of you. Do they have better content, right? This is something that most people don't actually think about. Do they have better content? If they do, go back and fix your content, right? You've already written it, just make it a little bit better. That's all you have to do. If you you know, you know, think your content's better, but it's really not getting out there, you have to go fix your titles and, and your metadata. So what is the title of metadata? It's this right here, posting inappropriate things on social media. I'll open this up right here so you can see it. But essentially, um, it's pulling out posting inappropriate things on social media. It can have an impact uh, on your on you and your company, uh, job offers and confidential info, posting plagiarizing materials, posting in involving drugs, alcohol use, nude photos, right? These are all things that you shouldn't be doing online. And if you go to the actual article, this is the actual article that I've written. So it goes through, talks about a bunch of different things. Now, Google is experimenting currently with plagiarized materials, right? Job info and confidential info. It's actually pulling those things in. That is not the actual metadata. I know this because I wrote it. But that's pretty interesting that it's going through and really trying to figure out the best data for that person who's searching that query. So if I, if I see that I have way better content than somebody else, but I'm not ranking on Google high enough, well, honestly, maybe Google's trying to get you higher, but your titles aren't, aren't there. If you might, you could write the best article ever. You could write the cure for cancer. It doesn't really matter what you write. If you don't have your title and meta description filled in, uh, you're, you're not going to go anywhere with it. So if I go to website, let's just go to blogs really quick and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, every website builder has this. I think that, nope, that's not spelled correctly. Posting inappropriate things. Every website builder is going to be able to offer adjusting your title and your meta description, which is really important, right? So there it is, page description. This is what Google should be showing, but it's not showing. Can posting inappropriate content on social media be good or bad, right? Posting inappropriate things on social media. It, it's starting to pull different stuff. Title, posting inappropriate things on social media can have an impact on you and your company. And essentially, this is where you can go to edit, modify, and adjust things. So that way, over time, 
with you being on Google, it will actually help you rank higher. So if you're not ranking where you want to rank, go back and fix this. Go back and fix your title, right? Page title, page description. This is all really, really good data for you to go back and fix because when you write it and you make it more appealing to your readers, they might go in and click yours. The more people that click yours, the more value they find from it, the higher you're going to rank in Google for it. So that's that's ultimately how this whole thing works. And if I pull this out to, uh, let's go 12 months here, you can actually see it took a little while for it to start ranking, right? I wrote this back in January 28th of 2020, right? And if I go to my search console, it took almost a whole year for it to rank online, right? Pretty wild. And even then, it's still not killing it because there's not that much... There's not that many searches to that area, right? And that's totally fine. I'm not I'm not mad about that. But this is things that you can take into consideration, right? Pros and cons of alignable. This one seems to be doing really well. Took a very long time, right? 322 is one year ago today, right? When did I write this piece of content? If you click on the pages, you can actually go in there, click that little arrow. So Jan June 8th of 2020 is when I actually wrote this content. It took till the beginning of November or the end of October to rank this, right? June, I wrote at the beginning of June, so you have all of June, July, August, September, October, five months for it to really start ranking online. That's an incredible amount of time. But when you do this, and I know, hey, I can go back to this and search it and make it better and better and better, right? Currently, I'm, I'm averaging position 4.5. At one point, it was position one on Google, but now it doesn't think it's worthy of position one, but depending on what somebody's searching, right? So this is how you can go through. You can start to drill down. You can start to figure out what's really important. If you click that and you're not sure exactly what page it's ranking for, just click on this. If it says blog, question mark, page, disregard that completely. But this is really what you want to see, right? The page that it's tied to, LinkedIn versus Alignable, what to know, and that's what's going to ultimately help you grow your business, right? get more traffic online. And that's the full understanding really of Google Search Console. Now there's a whole bunch of different things. Actually, I did forget one thing, I apologize. When you do all this, you wanna go back and you wanna submit your sitemap. So if you don't know how to get to your sitemap, in this case, we're using harrisonmarin.com. This is my website. You're gonna to go to whatever website it is, forward slash sitemap.xml, and you're gonna grab this file right here. This is where, this is basically the roadmap for Google to say, hey, this is this is what we this is where our sites are. This is where content is made or hidden and things like that. When you first submit it to Google Search Console, you're not going to have this here. Now, this is even more important for really intricate websites. Google will eventually find all your pages and over time index them, which is where they start to show you. But you need to go do this sooner than later. If you wait on this, you could be missing huge opportunities online. Go there and then on top of that, the more often you publish, you don't have to do this after you publish a new page, by the way, but the more often you publish, the more often Google is going to come back and check on this, right? So currently it's March 23rd when I'm actually recording this video, right? And I just submitted it to March 23rd. But if you look HTTP, right, this is the, without the uh, SSL on it, it was read yesterday. So chances are pretty good. If I roll back the footage, you'll actually see that this was March 22nd. It was read yesterday because Google knows I publish a lot on my website. Now I've slowed down in recent times as I'm making 120 YouTube videos in 120 days on my main channel. But this is, you know, this is something that Google is going back, seeing, hey, are there new pages? Do we need to index anything and stuff like that? So definitely go through, make sure that this is, submit your sitemap. And then once you do this, you're done. Let it sit for three, six, nine months. And after that period of time, you will have some great data in there. Now, some other things that are in here, if you want to remove uh, any pages from here, you can go through there and do that. Coverage is really important. If you're getting errors or valid with warning, errors are really, really bad. Try to get rid of all your errors. Valid with warning, not so bad. Valid is always good. Excluded, for whatever reason, they always exclude pages or they're just not indexed yet. Variety of different reasons. All you have to do is click on it. Alternative page with proper conical tag. Crawled, but currently not indexed. 57 pages, right? Ex uh, excluded, no index tag. You can go through, Google all of these. Do they really matter? To some degree, for most people, don't stress out about it. Core Web Vitals, also super important. So currently I have 22 um, poor URLs. Not a big deal, I'm not really worried about it. Could be something going on with either Kajabi, something they've rolled out or something like that. Something completely out of my control, totally normal. If you see this consistently going up over time, it should raise a red flag. You should definitely you know, start to try to figure out what's wrong with it. If you guys, like I said, if you guys have questions, leave a comment down below if, you, you know, if you're going through something strange. Mobility usage, 
pretty self-explanatory. If there's errors, just go fix them. Text is too small to read. Could be just a Google change or anything like that and any videos that you might have, right? Currently I have three videos that are all getting seen on Google. And that's it, that's your entire Google Search Console you know, review. Now I can go very deep into this and you know, what you could do and things like that, but this is just broad brush, hey, if you're struggling or you need to understand this in 25 minutes, this is how you do it. Now we're gonna jump over to Google Analytics uh, over here so that way we can do a quick little deep dive in into Google Analytics and really kind of read this. So now this is Google Analytics 3. Google Analytics 4 is a little bit more difficult to read. I personally like 3, but Google Analytics 4, different things, right? They have time on site, all that kind of stuff. So by default, it's gonna say last seven days. Obviously it's it's the last week, right? What does your last week look like? And over here you'll see, typically I drop down on the weekends. So the 20th was, um, Friday, or better yet, the 20th was Saturday, uh, the 21st was Sunday, right? I usually drop down on the weekends and I'm totally fine with that uh, because people aren't interested in learning about Google and podcasting on the weekends. Um, they wanna do it during the week, whether it's for their business or something like that. But I've had 117 users, 124 sessions, uh, bounce rate of 80.71, and then a session duration of 20, uh, 20 seconds. What does this all mean? In the last week, I've had 117 users. Some of those users came back for an additional session, so they might have gone to another page, they might have come back to the website. Bounce rate, as long as it's not 90 or over, you you know, to get that bounce rate lower, the more content you have on your website of like blogs and things like that where people wanna read it, the better. Uh, typically, I haven't really seen anybody get below like a 40, maybe even a 50. Um, usually it's between a 40 and like a 90 is like the, the average. If you're above 90, you need to go fix your website. Something's wrong with your website. Uh, that's usually a telltale sign. And there's a bunch of different things on here. There's there's traffic coming in from all over. And as time goes on and you add better content, more blog articles, more value to people, this bounce rate should in theory come down. Um, but if you have a very light website, meaning you have a homepage, about us page, your services, and maybe a sales page, your bounce rate might be very high because there's no data on there. There's nothing in there for people to stick around to and read and check out. Now, session duration, I don't particularly love this. It'll just tell you what your session duration is, how long people are on average staying on your website, right? But keep in mind, there's bots that show up in here, right? There's programs that are crawling this that show up in here. All these different things come into play. So don't necessarily worry about these too much, especially if you're in a new website. Now, if you're in a website that you've had, you've written blogs for, for two, three, four years, right? And your session duration is really low and your bounce rate's really, really high. You might need to go work some content out because there's something, there's a major gap that you have, right? That's, that's definitely cause for concern, but this is a project website. This is to see if you can actually get real traffic from, uh, from Kajabi and things like that. Now, that's that, you could always adjust the days, so if you want to look at the last 90 days, right, how am I ranking in the last 90 days? Traffic's been up pretty pretty good. These on the ends will always be down because this is in the middle of the week. It doesn't have anything to compare it to, right? And this is the beginning, so this, is, this could be right in the middle of a week where it's not gonna give you full information. So, one of the reasons why I don't love this view, always take a look at it from the two bullet points in before that. So am I down a little bit on traffic? Yes. That's totally fine. Now you have, how do you acquire users? You have traffic channel, source medium, and referrals. This should all be somewhat self-explanatory, so organic search, direct, social, referral, other. Organic search is how many people visit your website. So I just had a massive spike in visitors and the data isn't out just yet for my search console, but you'll be able to see organic search, direct means they went right to harrisonbarron.com, social means they came in from Pinterest, um, any of my personal stuff and you know, maybe a business account or something like that. And then a referral is from another website. And then you have other, which is maybe YouTube or something like that. Uh, YouTube also may f fall into referral as well. You have your source of medium, right? So you have Google, you have direct Pinterest, Pinterest, right? I, I have a Pinterest girl who, who does a lot of stuff for us. Sorry, coffee break. And I, and I am also the best dog dad ever. And this is the data that you're gonna be able to cultivate from this. And as you highlight it, you'll be able to see Google Search Console, right? Or Google sent me 16 uh, visitors, 10 visitors, um, another 10 visitors, 13 visitors, right? This was a really down day, six, another down day, 11. But we have an update of 18, or 17 better yet, right? So 
uh, still higher than the last seven days. And the cool part is if we pull this out to 90 days, you can really start to see like, hey, where is you know 114 versus 89, right? And I really care about the organic reach. I don't particularly care about social or ads or anything like that. And then you have referrals. So Facebook, Pinterest, InfoStack, uh, Facebook again. This will be this will vary tremendously site to site. But essentially, you just want to see, hey, what's going on? Once again, please disregard the, the, the beginning and end because they're halfway through the week. There's not enough data there for it to tell you exactly what it is, right? It's currently Tuesday, so I have two days worth of data. And who knows? Maybe this is a really high week. Uh, we had a really high week here, which was really cool. Um, but once again, that's going to change site to site to site. Now you have what pages do your visitors use most? So can I post inappropriate stuff on social media? Uh, LinkedIn versus Alignable, right? Anchor FM podcast. These are just what pages that people are visiting the most on your website. That's it. There's no hidden secrets behind any of this. Once again, you could pull this out to the last 90 days if you want like a real average. LinkedIn versus Alignable. Can I post inappropriate stuff on social media? Anchor FM, right? If you just see that forward slash, that's your homepage. So don't worry about it. You have your blog, right? Best... Uh, seven best LinkedIn. I don't remember what blog that was about me. Is alignable worth it? Course options, login, all that good stuff, right? Very simple, pretty self explanatory. User retention. Now, this is where it gets super confusing. If you are somebody that's easily confused, I'm not trying to be mean, but even I get confused looking at this, and this is what I do for a living. It's going to show you how many times your users are coming back based on a color code. I think in Google 4, they're starting to fix this because this is like the worst graph ever. But you'll see that in February 7th, right, they were at 105 users. And apparently none of them came back the next week. Uh, and then two of them came back the next week. And then one of them came back the next week. And then none of them came back on the fourth and fifth weeks. I don't quite understand this. I've never seen a customer ever get value out of this chart. I would highly advise just skip over it. Google Ads performance, I don't run any Google Ads on this. Wouldn't worry about this again. Um, active users, this is something good to see. If you see a major uptrend, great. If you see a major downtrend, you have a major problem on your hands. Maybe you stopped running ads or something like that. Uh, this is gonna be the last 30 days. If you do last 90 days, right? Good, major uptrend, love it. And now it's kind of, sitting stagnant, which is fine. I have a bunch of articles that are still working on getting uh, seen and stuff like that. By the way, while you're watching this video, keep in mind, Google rolled out a core update on December 4th. There is a whole bunch of turmoil right now on websites and things like that. So things aren't showing correctly. They're not, maybe not gaining as much traffic as they normally would, all that kind of stuff. So please be aware. Um, and, and sometimes these results will take a couple of weeks after to fully sink in. So now that we're in, you know, we're almost in April, now is when you're going to start to see the, the full results or the full effect of whatever Google did in December, where now you'll see, hey, how's it impacting? Is it impacting good or bad? What got impacted? All that kind of stuff. Where are your users? Once again, pretty self-explanatory. United States, US, you know, United Kingdom, India, Canada, Philippines. Users by day, I do find to be somewhat uh, informative. If you see that, hey, 10 a.m., your thing is lit up like a Christmas tree, right? With with darker with darker uh, bars, something good to know, right? So two o'clock seems to be a good time for my users, right? And same thing with 12 a.m. sometimes. Um, if you have a lot of grays in here, you probably need to add more content to your website. If you have a lot of blue in here, people are on your stuff all the time. Keep doing what you're doing. This is just what, you know, a little warning things, has a high uh, session duration, things like that. Sometimes you'll see errors in here and things like that. And then active users right now, very self-explanatory. Who's on my website right now? Currently, I have my website up on another page. So it's going to say one person. And that's your overview of Google Analytics. Now, I'm going to go one step deeper so you guys can really kind of see uh, how we look at Google Analytics and maybe some secrets that we, that we use. So in here, customization. Um, this is if you really want to customize your dashboard. We don't t particularly customize dashboards because sometimes our customers are looking at it. But real time, super helpful. If you do overview, this is going to change literally everything in here. Users right now, right? So I have somebody in California right now looking at my website. Um, you have locations, right? So United States, currently there's one person on the website. Traffic sources. I'm just going to fly through these because this is going to be something that's going to help you. So somebody in California actually just found my stuff off of Google, right? Content, what content is doing good right now? So LinkedIn versus Alignable, what to know? 
how ironic, right? Uh, you have your events, if there's any events going on on your website. So what is an event? An event could be a webinar, or an event could be a something with where you're driving a bunch of traffic to a page for whatever reason. Uh, conversions, if you have conversions set up, this will this will tell you. So if they go to a checkout page, what are your conversions right? Like, I don't have that set up yet. There's just no need because we're still looking to grow the traffic on it. Um, then you have your audience. So this is where you can start to really dig deeper and deeper. This will show you your audience over time, right? So 22 users, 20, 14 users, eight users, 16 users. This is by day. You could do by week. You could do by month, and it, by the way, if you if you don't see enough data in here, that's because you have to go up here and adjust this. So if I do, let's just do the last 30 days. And this will give us our four main points, right? So not bad. If we do, let's do custom, let's do 2020. So we'll do the, the last year. This is really when you could start to see that's I had a major spike in traffic. I ran a massive ad. Let me pull that out to March. So you'll see in here, this is what the traffic looks like over the course of weeks. If you do days, right, more data points. If you do hourly, potentially more data points. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost non-readable then. And then if you do months, you know, okay, great. We're on a massive uptrend in here. I ran some ads. I was doing some testing in here, but this is kind of like, that's good, steady growth. Is it the best growth in the world? No, but it's not bad. You know, 310 users, 250 users, um, 350 users, 500 users, right? 400, 500 users. Now we're down a little bit. We're at 360 users, right? These are all things that you could take into consideration when you're, you know, working on your website. How many people are new visitors versus returning visitors, right? If you have a membership website, people might be coming back over and over and over again for that. So you might have a larger slice of green. Right now I'm putting out a lot of content to get a lot of traffic to my website. Active users, same thing. And, and this is really where I'll say, hey, you might want to go in here and mess around with it. Uh, this is when things are going to start to get a little crazy. You could really go super deep in here. Um, demographics are always interesting. I love looking at the demographics. Right, so my audience is pretty much 50-50, male and female, right? My average audience is 25 to 34 years old, right? That seems to be about 34% of my traffic. 18 to 25 or 18 to 24 is 21% of my traffic. So really my target audience is 18 to 45 is really the numbers that I, the area that I need to focus on. So that could be content, that could be, you know, sales, anything like that. Um, Age, right? If you want, to, this will just break down its age to the best of its ability. It's just a different graph. Interest is always fun. I love looking at this kind of stuff. So, media and entertainment, shoppers, value. This is what Google identifies these people as. Once again, you could go through this on your own time. This is really when you start to go through, and you might even figure out stuff about your own website um, in here. And then you have acquisition. So, this is something that I always say check out. This is extremely important where you have Google search is a massive percentage of our acquisition. Then you have referrals, which is always good, social, direct, and then email. So I don't use email marketing as much as I probably should on my personal website. Once again, project website. But if you did, right, your emails are probably gonna be significantly larger. But it's a good way to just look at, hey, this is where people are coming in from. And keep in mind, this is over the last year. All right, and you can tell that just because of those numbers up there. And here you go, so all traffic, where is it coming in from? Right, and you could go in and you could select these and see what you know organic search is like. Right, perfect. Organic search is growing. Very happy to see that. If if it started to tank, I'd be very concerned. Um, but you could go through. I do encourage you guys to go check out these Google Ads, Google Search Console, social campaigns, any behaviors that people have. This is something tremendously important. So if you see behaviors, right? So they went from the homepage to the blog. Can I post inappropriate stuff on social media? Maybe it's behavior flow, where they're coming in on the website from. So where are they coming in, in from? Where are they going? You can see all the routes that they're gonna take. 66 more pages, right? They came in from the homepage. They started they started their, their sessions, right? And then they went into uh, the blog and then they found a blog that they might be interested in. So whatever these are, maybe it's back to home, about me, whatever it may be, right? This is, you could go in and dive in with as much detail as you want. This was a brief overview of this whole thing, how to set it up, how to read it. 
And ultimately, once you understand how to set it up and how to read it, go through and just drill down. If you've had a website up for a long period of time, go through, spend some time on it. This will help you tremendously down the road with growing traffic, growing acquisitions, building your business and things like that. My name is Harrison Barron. I am from Growth Generators, growth-generators.com or growth-generators.com. And sorry this video is long. It's about 40 minutes long. This is a pretty in-depth training uh, for you guys. I hope you guys find value in this. This is something that I find extremely interesting uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, if you guys have questions, leave them down in the comments below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, notification bell so you never miss another opportunity to grow your business. I'll see you guys later.